Thank you very much, Divisional Band. For those that are going to be at TYMI this summer, that song you just heard is, was written by our special guest for this summer. So if you don't have any plans, uh, you want to be here this summer. Now, I want to welcome you to our spring festival. I was just kind of trying to figure this out. How many in this room have either played in, in one of these groups through the years? If you could just raise your hand. I just want to see... Okay, how many have never played in one of these groups? Yeah, that's kind of where I was. Well, listen, this is going to be an incredible afternoon. If you were here with us this morning, uh, we had a great time this morning. A lot of talented young people here in the Texas Division, and so we're just excited that you can join us uh, this afternoon. I also want to thank, uh, first of all, the music department, 
Matt and Sarah and the, the crew. If you could just stand, let's show our appreciation for them. Kadar. And I, I would uh, be remiss if I didn't say thank you to the core officers who every month, uh, if you're, if you, we have some core officers that come every month uh, all the way from the border uh, in, in McAllen and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, Corpus Christi, I mean, everywhere across the state. I want to say thank you to all the core officers that come and be a, that are a part of this thing. Let's give them a hand. And then I, I also want to give a special word of appreciation for all of our instructors, and especially those counselors who come every month uh, and, and pretend they're going to sleep on Friday night uh, each week uh, or each month, and then they have to get in a van on Saturday after a whole night of rest and drive back. Thank you very much for all of those that have made that commitment. So we're going to get started here, and if you would join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again, first of all, for the gift of music, for the talent that is in this room, for the expertise. We thank you for the volunteers and the soldiers and the uh, people who come each and every month and rehearse, and we're just so thankful for what you're doing through the gift of music in the Salvation Army. And so this afternoon, Father God, we again want to honor you by the giving of our talents and our skills and pray that your blessing would be upon this service for we pray this in jesus name and all of god's people said amen, amen. hey y'all one two three get up we got victory no weapon they throw at me You know it won't prosper Now yeah. Just got laid off I'm doing good The house ain't even paid off I'm doing good you should be afraid but I'm feeling good All the time you say God is good we Come on Down, down, down Don't forget who's in control Walls are falling down, down, down They call it down Be ready for the new Jericho You're waiting on So what you gonna do? Hey yo, one, two, three, get up, we got victory. No weapon they throw at me. It won't. You know it won't prosper now. God, this is crazy. Hey, yo, one, two, three, get up, we got victory. No weapon they throw at me. You know it won't prosper now. Storm's raging. I'm doing good. You see the world changing. I'm doing good.
say? I'm doing good. You see, the reason why you're doing good, I'm doing good. is because what's ahead of you is I'm greater than good. all the things that were behind you. And see, you gotta I'm understand. You gotta understand that everything was always.
You all right? I'm about to head out. Yeah. What time is it? Um, just past eight. Eight? I was supposed to be home an hour ago to make dinner. Oh, well, me and David are having so much problems. He's still mad about you going back to school? Boy, is he. Sarah, we can't keep having this fight. You're working all day and studying all night, and I'm struggling to keep it all together. Why do you need this degree anyways? Are you still going on about that? You know, Sarah, you can do things for yourself, too. You do so many things for you, him and the kids. You can do something for yourself every once in a while. I just don't know who I am apart from David. You don't? I mean, where do I even start? I mean, aren't you getting this history, history degree? Doesn't that interest you? Of course. I love history. It's fascinating. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The world could use some real scholars like you. I know. Doing this means I'm giving up on my own kid. Mom! Why don't you take me to dance practice anymore? And Dad doesn't know how to do my hair right. And you never put me to bed. You know that they love you, and it's only for a little while. You'll be able to figure out a good balance and your mom's nearby to help out. Every time I ask for help, she gives me an earful of all the choices I've made. Dear, I mean, do you really need to get a new degree? You already have a career. Why, your kids need you at home. And you don't need to change it all up. Be happy where you are right now. Girl, don't listen to her. She'll never be satisfied. Audrey, the woman never stops. Every time I tell her that I'm passionate about something that I'm doing, she doesn't get it. Everyone thinks they know what's best for me, even my weird Aunt Lucy. Go into the army, fight for your country, see the world, get an arm tattoo, join the paratroopers. This is the career for you, Sarah. It all runs together after a while. We hold Mom, these no you don't put me to bed anymore. You don't tell me to dance practice. See the girl. Are you serious? Dude, look at her bed. That's not the light I mean, Sarah. I guess I have been wrapped up in my own worries. You don't have to figure it out all by yourself. He will be your light. Send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and my delight. I will praise you with lyre, O oh God, my God. Good afternoon. So I get the privilege of working with a lot of very talented creative artists here in Texas, but today I'm very honored to shine a spotlight on someone whose dedication and talent have left an indelible mark. This individual, soon to be a senior soldier, exudes a love for the Lord that is unmistakable from the moment you meet them. With a warm smile and a kind spirit, they embody the ess essence of friendship and compassion. From a young age, this remarkable individual has been a beacon of leadership and inspiration. Since they returned from their very first conservatory at the age of 12, they have been actively involved in teaching drama for the past four years at their core. Despite their youth, they have effortlessly guided those older than them, demonstrating a remarkable ability to see the best in others and to love unconditionally, just as God does. Their faith is not only evident in their words, but also in their actions, as they consistently reach out to encourage others and share the goodness of God. This young lady's talent as an actress is truly a gift from God, and she utilizes it to bring glory to his name. Whether portraying a biblical accounts or breathing life into a script, she has a unique ability to move others and inspire faith. Her performances, both in the core and with Texas drama, are a witness to their personal relationship with the Lord, reflecting the depth of her per spiritual journey 
and her unwavering trust in his plan. As she continues to grow and develop as a leader, we are certain that her impact will only magnify. It is with great pleasure we announce this individual as the recipient of the 2024 Creative Artist of the Year Award. Please join me in congratulating Jessa Phillips from the Left Control.
really stressed with work and everything, and I was wondering if you had any advice for me. Be still. Be still. Jesus, I barely even have any free time. How am I supposed to just be still? Come to me and I will give you rest. Okay, but I'm already here. What more can I do? Be still. Fine. Okay, I'm being still now. Sorry, Jesus. I just have to check this email real quick. It's work again. No matter how many times I tell them I'm busy, I just, well, I'm exhausted. And it feels like I have no more me time. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, I've been doing so much for you. I teach Sunday school. I take the kids to church. I even led my whole office to salvation, Lord. I want to do more. What more can I do? Be still. No, thanks, Lord. You don't need to worry about me. I don't need to be still. I'm just ready to serve you, Lord. Here I am, wholly available. What more can I do? Come to me, and I will give you rest. Okay. Oh, wow. I didn't realize how exhausted I was until now. Excuse me, I'm trying to be still here. Then why are you holding a phone? In case. I know it's in a case. I just want to ask why. No, I meant just in case. In case of what? An emergency? <laughs> so you think some earth-shattering event that could happen in the next couple of seconds, and you having your phone is going to save the day? Well, when you put it that way... Hey, stop judging me! Why aren't you being still? Well, maybe I didn't realize how tired I was until now, but isn't that a God thing? He wants us to work tirelessly for him, doesn't he? I mean, I guess. I just wish I could do more. I just don't have enough time. What are you doing right now? The reason I ask is because we really need a Sunday school teacher for our nursery of children. Right now, I'm trying to be still. Oh, right. Back to being still. Here we go. Hey, do you have a moment for the gospel? Hey, keep it down. I'm the angry atheist in this sketch. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm here to say mean things. Is that Jesus? Maybe I should say something to him. Be still. What? Come to me and I will give you rest. Is that all I have to do to be your friend, Jesus? You have to do more than that to be Jesus' friend. You also have to work very hard. God, Jesus, God loves those who love themselves. Right, what have you done for God lately? Are y'all guys with Jesus? Are you two being still? Duh. Doesn't seem like you're very well rested. I keep getting work emails. Then turn off your phone. You can't do that. He just said that he would give you rest. What's up? You don't trust him? He seems pretty cool to me. Hey man, I ain't got time for this. He literally just said that he would give you rest. Yeah, but he can't mean that literally. Hi, when you become a Christian at the end of the sketch, could you help me with a bake sale at my church? Lady, you're exhausting. Why aren't you resting? I don't need to rest. I'm too good of a Christian to get burnt out. I need to be on my A-game all the time. I need to provide all this time. If I don't, the church will fall. Isn't he He needs my help. This is putting so much more stress into my life. What does being still even mean? Jesus, I just can't anymore. Come to me and I will give you rest. I just don't know what to do. Be still. What are they doing? Well, this looks like a classic Matthew 18 to me. Would you be interested in it? You know what? I think I know what Jesus wants us to do. Is that it? I don't think so. I think I think I'm going to try it. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace, and I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly.
would like to sing along, Miss Esther is going to help us sing this. So feel free to sing out with her. If you don't, that's all right. Just sit back and enjoy. sinners come all you sinners come find his mercy taste of goodness the real I despise taste of his goodness find what you're looking for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to Save us, whoever believes in Him will live forever. Cut all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him for the wonders of His love. Come on, let's praise God. Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. God so loved the
Isn't it a privilege to be here together celebrating in the accomplishments of such wonderful bands? Can you give them a hand in the creative arts? It's a blessing to be a part of this division. There's such talent and heart and to sing the hearts for God. It's a, one of the most beautiful things. Um, today it's a privilege that I have to get to announce this year's Musician of the Year Award. This individual we wish to highlight has served with distinction as a soldier, participating in drama skits, leading Club 316 activities, and volunteering at numerous events throughout the year. As an employee at the Boys and Girls Club, their impact, their impact as a youth development professional has been nothing short of remarkable, earning praise from club students to, for being funny and chill. Furthermore, thanks to their hard work at the core kettle, as the core kettle coordinator during the Christmas season, their core goals were met. In the realm of music, this person is an up-and-coming musician with the heart for teaching, performing, and creating. They play many instruments, including guitar, bass, keyboard, piano, piano, and multiple brass instruments. They serve as the main leader for the music programs in their core, and their core family is incredibly thankful for, to have them, and as are we. This young man participates not only in core activities, but is also a member of the Texas Brass Divisional Youth Praise Team, and has served on music conservatory staff for many consecutive summers. Our division is truly blessed to have this young man among us. We're very excited to see what plans God has for him in the future, and it is with great pleasure that I announce this individual as the recipient of the 2024 Musician of the Year Award. Please join me in congratulate, congratulating Josh Ellis from Florida. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship. In essence, we're his masterpiece. But I don't feel like a masterpiece when I look at myself. I want to be a masterpiece. I want to be everything that God created me to be. God, please remove anything in my life that doesn't need to be there. God, mold me into the image of your son so that I can be your perfect masterpiece. Amen. Hello. <laughs> Whoa. Who are you? I'm God. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You prayed, so I'm here. That's how it works. <laughs> okay, well, if you're God, then make it snow in here. You know, I really don't want to do that, because if I make it snow in here, it's going to get really yucky. You know? <laughs> yeah, see, you're not God. See, God wouldn't even say yucky. Yes, I would. It's a Greek word. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, what does... Lamentations 59 said. See, Lamentations is a really short book. It only has five chapters. Yeah, why is it so short? I was tired of lamenting. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're God, then who's going to win the World Series this year? You see, I'm not so much into playing games. Why are you so much into playing games? You are God. What gave it away? <laughs> you answered my question with another question. <laughs> I do do that, don't I? See, I did it again. Sit down. Hey, what's that for? These are my tools. Well, cool. Uh, wait, how do you know what to choose them and what not to choose them? I basically just remove everything that's not supposed to be in your life. You know, kind of like dead weight. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Speaking of dead weight, can you just chisel right in here? You see, I try to do everything, like I try to eat right, I try to like run, you know, I just can't seem to get rid of it, you know? Oh, I even tried Pilates. You know, it seems like you really like to talk, and I want to chisel. So what's it gonna be? Talk, chisel, talk, nope. chisel. Nope, nope, bring on the chisel, bring on the okay. chisel. Okay. Right. 
It seems like he got a lot of anger. Some pride. You've been comparing yourself to others instead of me. Ow. You're right? Yeah. Okay. You're lazy, but you act like you're busy. You got a problem with lust. Whoa. I don't have a problem with lust. You don't? No, I don't. Look, can we just take a time out right quick? You, I can, I think I've been doing pretty good. You're doing good. But when you look in the mirror, who do you see? I see me. Right, so we need to keep working because when you look in the mirror, you're supposed to see me. <sighs> look, not to be a, take offense to this, or please don't, but when I start to look more like you, people start to get uncomfortable around me. I mean, even my friends are at church are like, Tommy, art thou so holier than thou? So you would rather play God in certain areas of your life instead of me being God in all of your life? That's not what I'm saying. It's what you meant. <sighs> okay, it is. But we've been doing such a good job so far. Can we just take a minute and we'll just come back to it? You know, you want to control and I want to chisel. So what's it going to be? Control, chisel. Control, oh, chisel. Okay, okay, okay. Chisel. All right. But can we just chisel where I want you to chisel? You're trying to control again. Okay. Mm. Okay. You've been holding on to this one for a while. You ready? Yeah. Ugh, it just hurts. Trust me, this hurts me more than it hurts you. <sighs> right. You don't understand this type of pain. Hey, don't talk to me about pain. I sent my son to die oh. for your sin and your pain. Do you know what insanity is? It's doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. There are things in your life that you go back to whenever you're sad or angry or anxious. These empty wells, they do not work. Okay, well, I'm just thinking that maybe... Well, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Okay, well, if we just do it a different way... Your ways are not my ways. Okay, listen, I can't be good. You can't be good. I made you to be good. I'm be just, good. I'm just tired of letting you down. You were never holding me up. I hold you up with my righteous right hand. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and chisel. Go ahead and chisel. I, I, I know what's back there. I know what's in me. I look at it every day in the mirror. It's just a scared little kid that acts like an adult and tries to dress like one, but it really isn't. You've been listening to too many voices that are not of me. How do I show you that my love is without bound? Reach in your pocket. Go ahead, reach in your pocket. Do you know what that is? It's a page from a journal I had when I was younger. Read it. Dear God, today I'm turning everything over to you. I'm not going to hold on to anything anymore your word says that you will make me your masterpiece and use me to do great things. I don't see how that's possible, but I want that with all I am. So please do whatever it takes to make me what you want. I love you, God. I love you too. I love you too much to leave you where you're at. When you look at these, I don't want you to see a prison. I want you to see a father disciplining his child because a father disciplines those who he loves. I know. I want you to look out there and I want you to say, Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Tom. No, not the way you see yourself, the way I see you. Tommy is God's original masterpiece. Yes, you are.
Sarah, I agree. We are very blessed uh, to be here, blessed to hear all of these great artists um, and all of the things that they've accomplished this year. I was just telling my husband, I, I sat in on the guitar class uh, just last month, I think it was, and the progress that they've made even from there to today, even in that uh, one area and all of the progress that's happened in this year. Um, I'm just so proud of all of you. We are going to give you a chance to stand up now and sing and use your talents to praise the Lord. We're going to sing uh, Who is on the Lord's Side. There are some an introduction from the band. There are some interludes in between the verses. So uh, just follow along and we'll sing this together.
She got this guy's Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Brian, 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 get up, please. Brian, you need to suck it up and do this game. Come on, Brian. Brian. Give us a moment, will you? Brian, I need you to suck it up and do this skit. Do you hear me? Come on, Brian, you can do it. I can't believe this. Here we are in front of 300 people, and you chicken out on us like this. Uh, are mics on? No, I'm pretty sure they turned them off. OK, Brian. I can't believe you're doing this to me right now. I finally get a lead in one of these skits and you just had to freak out on all of us. Yeah, Brian, what's, what's going on? Let, uh, just, just another second, please. What's going on with you? You've never been this afraid to do a drama before. Y'all don't understand. I sinned, all right? Are you satisfied? I sinned. I don't know how I'll ever stand up in front of the congregation again. Why not? Because God has surely taken the anointing away. How could he use a sinner like me? <laughs> Brian, have you heard of this thing called, I don't know, grace? Yeah, God still loves you. Why do you think he'll cut you off now? Because I'm not talking about a sin for my past. I know God has forgiven me for those. I'm talking about a sin today. On the way to church, I sinned, and it was a doozy. It doesn't matter what you did. No, I want to know. <laughs> me too. You guys. Uh, look, Brian, just because we commit to God's plan doesn't mean we stop sinning. God's grace is just as strong after as it was before. So, book up, little camper. We've got a skit to do. Yeah, God loves you and forgives you. You shouldn't carry around the guilt of the sins that you've already asked forgiveness for. So, think you can do the skit? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, everyone, places. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, <laughs> see those sad people over there? Maybe we should talk to them? Hmm. What would we say? Well, we could talk about the joy of the Lord, love, and forgiveness. What a splendid idea. Let's go. Hey, you guys look awfully sad. We'd like to tell you about a wonderful plan, God, that would just make you want to jump for joy. <laughs> Oh, that's convincing. All these people are staring at us. Can you not hold it together for a few minutes so we can do this skit? How could God possibly use me? Sin has completely destroyed any chance of me ever performing in front of the worship team again. <laughs> Brian. I can't, I can't right now. Sorry about this, Captain. I don't know what's wrong with him. Do no, you no. think we should do this again? Or? No, no, no. I see exactly what's going on here. Brian is strictly just dealing with his guilt. He's trying to new, live a new life in creation with God. But it's impossible to live for God if you're dealing with guilt. So let's, let's have a seat here. Let's sit down and let's begin this sermon. And the sermon of... 2,000 years ago, guilt was nailed to the cross. Amen. That was kind of like my debut, but I had great people to do it with, right? So let's give it up for them. Um, but I just want to take a few minutes this, uh, this evening or this afternoon uh, just to, to give you a devotional thought. And uh, Matt's already warned me. He said, this is not a, a sermon or anything, so you got to be quick. Uh, but, but anyway, I want to talk to you just for a moment about this. Because uh, and for starters, I want to start off by saying, 
Um, if you wonder about God's um, amazing things that he's doing, it's right here today. Um, by us hearing the, and singing the songs that we're singing, uh, us listening to the songs and the brass band play, this is all God's goodness of who he is. Um, but I want to I say this uh, today because there's a term. How many of you are gamers in the place? Raise your hand if you're a gamer. All right. If, and what I mean by that is you game and you game and you just can't get enough of gaming. But here's the thing about gaming, because if you don't continue to play games, you get a little stagnant, don't you? Yeah, like me? Oh, no, I don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be a gamer, so that's fine. But for those gamers, you have to continually, continuously play almost every day to get better and better and better. Same thing applies when you play your horn, right? You can't just play it when you come to DMA. Let me just say that again. You can't just play it when you come to DMA. You have to play it in your core. You have to play it at home when you're by yourself. Yeah, it takes work. It takes practice, right? But even, let's go back to those gamers, because there's a new term that's called game leaning. Anybody ever heard of it? OK, nobody knows. Perfect. You don't know. I can educate you today. But it's called gamer lean. And no, for the old heads in the building, I'm not talking about gangster lean. I'm talking about gamer lean. And all it is is simply, for those that play Mario Kart, you know what I'm talking about, because when Mario Karts get serious, you have to kind of like sit up in your seat, right? You kind of kind of got like lean forward because trouble's coming. And so I want to say this today, because the analogy here is that sometimes in life, things get a little serious. And I truly believe because tomorrow's not promised to us, Mars not promised to us, but God gives us eternal life. But here's the thing. When life gets serious, who do we turn to? Because, because God knows us, he knows us by name, and he knows the real us. But I want to lean in just for a moment because if we lean into God, and this was taken kind of from youth councils, but I want to remind us of these few steps. Because as we lean in and lean on God's everlasting promises, there's a couple of things that we have to acknowledge. Number one, I remember Tim stood on this stage and he, he had a flashlight in one hand and a Bible in the other. And he said, you need to call out sin in your life. That's exactly his words. And it's true. Because just like on stage just now, you know, Brian was dealing with his guilt. But that guilt, that shame was nailed to the cross over 2,000 years ago. So whatever sin you're dealing with right now in your life, expose it. Quit playing, expose it, and give it to God. So acknowledge sin in your life. Number two, repent. You know, we, I talked about that leaning forward. Well, if we sit in the chair and life gets serious, then we'll lean forward enough to, to be on our knees before God. And so my prayer is, is that we acknowledge that sin, but we give it completely to God, that we repent of those sins that we've committed. Number three, surrender to God's strength. And this reminds me of James 4, 7 that says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In our life, are we surrendering to God? Or are we running completely away from him and his goodness? You know, when we surrender, we have the opportunity to actually worship by playing our horns, by participating in our core, praying, or taking advantage of those moments that God gives us. The last one, and not least, is em embrace God's redemption in your life. And when we lean forward in our life and we, and we lean into God, it's amazing the things that he will, he will show us. But when we show up, we pay attention, and we get involved, he can use us in an amazing way. And despite any of our sin, despite any of our shame, God is able to use us in an amazing way. 
Um, as I was thinking back to uh, that, that gamer lean, it makes me think about uh, these, these things because I, I mentioned Mario Kart and how things get serious and then you know, we kind of sit up in our chairs. But I also think about this because oftentimes in the backyard, me and Eli will go play basketball. And granted, he's 12 years old, I won't say what I am, but there are times today that he's getting good enough that he feels like he can almost beat me, right? Where is he at? Is he in here? Oh, there. He probably wants to say, yeah, Dad, I can beat you every day. But I say that because every now and then, every now and then I have to make sure I let him know that, hey, I'm still your dad, and I'm not quite old enough that you can beat me anytime, any, anywhere, right? But here's the thing. In your life, in your life right now, and this goes for everybody here, this afternoon, in your life, when have things been where you thought they were unfair? Where maybe things just got a little, little more serious than usual and it makes you sit up in your seat? Do you go to God in prayer? Do you lean forward towards God? And so my prayer today because I heard, I heard this quote uh, earlier this week. It said, if you swim in pollution, you'll get polluted. Anybody ever heard that? But then there was also another one. It says, God, God will use you in spite of your sin, but he'd rather use you through your humble obedience. And the reality is, we learned at youth councils, that, is that we're, we're in control of our response. So you have a response. You, you can respond to God's goodness by simply leaning forward and leaning towards him. So that's my prayer today. And again, we, we still have some wonderful things here uh, this afternoon to enjoy, but all of this is because of God's goodness in our very lives. And I think it's special that we have that opportunity all throughout the Salvation Army. And of course, you know, Tim, Tim has constantly texted me uh, from youth councils here li lately and, and just reminded me, he said, man, I've never seen anything like the brass band. It's just amazing. So we have something special that God has gifted us with, and we need to use it, and we need to tell his story wherever we go. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. And we thank you for even the sin in our lives, Lord, that we may come to you and know that you have taken care of all of those things, Father. So, Father, we pray, Lord, allow us to have a, a godly link. Lord, that leans towards you in those moments that we need you the most. And Father, we pray all of these things in your precious and holy name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
The name Jack Morrison is synonymous with Salvation Army music making in the Texas Division. For close to 30 years, Jack was a bandmaster of both the Texas Divisional Band and the Dallas Temple Corps Band. Under his leadership, the Divisional Band visited Mexico City annually to participate in the commissioning of the cadets in that territory. First time that, uh, that, I, rem that I went to Mexico was in 1967. The Divisional Band continued to make those trips and trips to other places in Mexico over the next 30 years. The whole experience was one of, one of excitement because we went from one venue to another venue and sometimes we played on the street, and sometimes we marched and sometimes we played at the American Embassy and sometimes we played on television and we just had a wonderful time. I had a real surprise. The last time I visited Mexico, an officer came up to me after one of the meetings and said to me, she pointed her finger at me and she said, you're my hero. And I said, what? And she said, you're my hero. And I said, I've got to hear more about this. And she explained that, that she had been raised in the children's home and that her, she had four sisters who were also raised there, and that she graduated from high school while she was in a children's home, that uh, she got away from the Lord, as she said, and, but however, she was involved in a bad automobile accident, which left her with some burn scars to this day. And then she said, you know, as I lay there in the bed, I was thinking back on what I had left in the way of a spiritual life. And um, I, I came back to the Lord. But it wasn't anything that anybody said, it wasn't anything that I read. It was the songs that you played in the band. You go to an, these events as a leader, you're busy, your mind is planning ahead. You pray ahead of time. You ask the Lord to help you. you. You work at it as a ministry. Those of us who work as Christian musicians do so with a general knowledge and background that we're doing this for the Lord. But we have no idea how much the Lord helps that effort and reaches out to a person that you had no idea you touched because of the music that we played. Bandmaster Morrison was a hero of the faith and a wonderful example and mentor to other leaders that came up behind him. We honor Jack's legacy with an award in his name given to a core music or creative arts leader who has taken up this same banner of sacrificial service and God-centered leadership. Let me tell you about Raul and Stephanie Munoz. Uh, they are invaluable members of the Waco Corps. Uh, their leadership, what they, they bring to the Corps, whether it's in the music or just in the Corps setting itself. Raul and Stephanie lead our praise and worship every Sunday morning. They, they lead with, with passion, and I, I think that they bring a lot to the Salvation Army worship experience through their praise and worship. But they are also brass band uh, players. And uh, Stephanie is our solo cornetist, and she uh, leads the, the band. Well, she's not the band master, but she leads the band from her cornet, if you will. Raul is well-versed in just about any instrument, but he chooses to play the bass for us during Sunday mornings so that we have that part in the band. But it doesn't stop on Sunday mornings. 
there's more that they they do every Wednesday evening between uh, September and the end of May we have our Sam's music program where we teach young people how to play instruments they teach them how to play individually but also as a band so a lot of these kids who were coming to the Salvation Army learning how to play a musical instrument for the very first time are now able to play concert pieces at the end of the year and we'll be having our second annual recital coming up later in the month of May so they have done amazing work with the young people in our core, not just uh, on Sundays, but on Wednesdays. They, they are very careful in order to teach them Bible and Jesus in the music they choose and in the way that they lead. They um, intertwine the message of the gospel during breaks of music. And so it's very much an evangelistic experience as well as a band teaching experience. So I am thrilled that Raul and Stephanie have, are being recognized by the Divisional Music Department for the leadership that they give, in particular to the Music Department, but in general, just as members of the Salvation Army in Waco, Texas. I don't, know if, I don't know if we gave away who our winners are for this year, but uh, in addition to, uh, to this honor, uh, also um, at Youth Councils, uh, Stephanie was uh, supposed to be awarded also a Sue Byers uh, Leader Award. I told him you have to be there to win, so I already spent your gift card, but we have, we have that plaque for you as well. So uh, why don't, why don't uh, you come to the stage and let's give our applause to our leaders of the year, Raul and Stephanie Munoz. We're nearly there, folks. I just wanted to uh, say a few thank yous for a busy weekend like this and, of course, a, uh, a long season uh, with our DMA program. But it's been a great day and a great end to, uh, to the season. Not quite over. A few things coming up. But uh, first, for my thank yous, I'd like to thank, uh, as, as Colonel Art said earlier, our drivers, our core officers, our chaperones that come every month and, and do that long distance. Let's, let's give them a round of applause. For uh, today's program, uh, we want to thank uh, David and Captain Odessa, Sarah in the booth, uh, as well as the Hobbit Cell team for, uh, for supporting us this weekend. We have a lot of volunteer leaders here, especially in our creative arts program. We have Ben and Phil who help with divisional band, uh, Jesse, Captain Peter, Captain Nick that help with our guitar class, Captain Whitney and Alicia helped with art. Captain Shin Young, the best accompanist in the business for our youth choir. And our creative arts leaders, I shouldn't have wrote names down or start calling because I'm going to forget somebody, but I, I think this is everyone. Caitlin, Hope, Takima, Brianna, Michaela, that help with our creative arts. Thank you guys so much for all you do throughout the year. Um, my crew, ever-changing, but it's, uh, it's great to, uh, to work with Sarah Goddard, 
uh, Noemi and Alex, and so I want to thank them for all their hard work getting ready for this weekend. Thank you, guys. And we have a lot of support from, uh, from our DYSs and Colonels Pinhale, so thank you guys for, uh, for all your support from, for our programs. Just a couple announcements, and then uh, the, these two bands in front of us are going to join together, uh, and we're going to play a piece that you guys can sing along with us, so we hope that, uh, that you worship as we uh, just about conclude our program. But as I said, the season's not quite over. We have uh, Texas Brass and Creative Arts Ministry Weekend coming up, May 17th to 19th, to, at, to Waco, who we just heard about. So we're excited to go be with you guys there. So please look at your emails and, uh, and, and get all those details so you can join us in, uh, in about a month's time. Uh, you saw on the screen we have our camps coming up this summer. We'd love to see you guys register and start filling those up. Registration's open, so please do get signed up for those and continue uh, uh, sending your kids to develop them here at camp. Um, a couple announcements of a couple logistic things as we uh, get close to the end of our program. Um, our Lone Star Brass folks, our Blue Bonnet Brass folks, uh, your shirts, we'd like you to leave them here because we, we want you to advance to the next band and the next band next year. So leave your shirts here, please. We can have them for next year's groups uh, when you're finished. And then uh, once you get into this group, you get to keep it forever, okay? That's the goal. Um, also, instruments. We always have a few instruments left after an event like this, so please make sure you have your instrument as you get in the van with your case. Some folks left cases in the Silver Spur, so grab all, all of your equipment. Uh, about an hour after the event, I just start taking off uh, tags, and they become uh, our department. So please uh, get your instruments. Don't leave them here. There's a bit of work to be done at the last amen uh, in here, and so anyone that doesn't have a long drive, we'd appreciate your help in, uh, in cleaning up the bands. Uh, also, my team and our lovely DOSs are going to take down this backdrop this afternoon and these risers. So we'd appreciate any help of anybody that doesn't have a long way to go. Um, but we do appreciate um, uh, the season. We think it's been a great one, great concert today. And as I said, we're going to um, end with a mass band number. And then Captain Odessa is going to bring our benediction. And there will be a postlude from Texas Brass. But here is Glorious Day with our mass band. And the words will be on the screen if you'd like to sing along.
All right, so one last thing. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to stand up for our benediction. Uh, but before we do that, Matt, you, you thanked everybody, but, man, we want to we weren't really thank you, Matt uh, Broom, for all that you do for our youth and music department. All right, let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the many uh, gifts and talents that you have blessed these individuals with in this room. We thank you for the family and friends that have traveled near and far to come and participate in today's service, Lord. We ask that you would give each and every person safe travel and mercies on the way home, Lord. Uh, be with them, lead and guide and protect them, Lord. Um, and please help them to hold the things that they've uh, heard and seen and done today uh, in their hearts, Lord. We ask these things in your precious name we pray. Amen.